For the next phase of the project, I'm going to need to have a way to reverse these motors. And for that, what I've got, and I cut this out using my uh, laser cutter, is this little plate with two double pull, double throw switches. And if you look behind, that's what it looks like. Wiring up the switches assembly. This is for the linear motors to retract and extend those. Uh, this uses two double pull, double throw switches. You've got the positive and negative is coming into the center. And then these reverse, uh, these wires reverse on each side so that we reverse the motors. And this is the connections that uh, will go to the wires going up through the roof to the motors. Right, this is the control panel installed right below the equalizer jacks. I believe when I finished wiring in the solar controller, I never actually showed what it looked like when it was done being wired in. But what you can see here is the positive bus. Negative bus is down below. This is the uh, DC to DC charger from the alternator. This is going to be, or is, the 25 amp breaker for the solar panels, the new panels. Uh, coming on this side, here's a 60 amp breaker for the output from the solar controller. And here is the solar controller mounted on a aluminum plate that's offset about 3 eighths of an inch from the wood because these will get pretty warm. And from here you can see down below, this is the back side of the switch panel. Here's the roof where the panels are going to go, where this panel right in front of here is going to be as at right now. That will be one of the sliding panels. And so I've got to remove that one. But here's where the two on the uh, driver's side will go. And I'm standing, well, and here's where the uh, fourth panel will go. The way these things, these panels are set up is that I'm using, these are iron ridge mounts that uh, are actually were designed for houses, but uh, they have a screw that goes in here and it locks down the panel. The nice thing about this is that uh, I can use different size panels if I, in the future if the more efficient ones come out. The way these things are put on the roof is that I use VHB tape is underneath half inch or one inch wide VHB tape. Then this is marine grade adhesive that goes there. This is a 3M uh, 5200 adhesive. And then just because I like overkill, I used a four inch wide Eternabond tape on the leading edges on all of these, just to, to kind of add that little extra bit of protection there. Uh, there is a kind of messy right here is, as I tried to use the Eterna Bond tape to hold down the wires, that didn't work out so well. And since then I have gone to using these small with uh, zip ties to hold them down, but I've got to clean up the mess that was left over from the Eterna Bond tape that uh, was holding things down. The wires come in through the hole right up here in the front corner and got four wires here. You got the positive and negative for the new um, panels and also these right here which are uh, 12 gauge wire which is going to be the control uh, power for the linear actuators to move them in and out. Today we finally get a day without any rain and relatively warm if you call uh, low 60s warm but uh, ready to install these since they're relatively heavy and they need uh, assistance. I also set up a ladder that so we can pull these things up uh, and get them up there. So there's four of these panels ready to go that are laying right here. Remove the panel from the front 
and with assistance uh, I don't have any video of us pulling these things up but basically just used a rope and slid it up the side of that ladder since it's just the two of us nobody to hold the camera but we've got all four of these panels up here well insulation has always got uh, interesting uh, twists and turns uh, the front one panel set got installed with no problems no issues and however this one here required me to go and move the motor from where it was which was right over at the very end to the middle here because the interference I had with uh, between this panel which I had to still scoot down a little ways and still uh, keep, uh, keep it away from the ladder and also the uh, that's the skylight for the shower so that's uh, required some modifications there on this one here I'm in the model, middle of doing it I'm also changing and moving the motor to the middle so I just drilled the two holes here uh, the reason for this is because this has got to slide down further because you see this motor is up tight against here so this motor has to be moved over to the middle so that this whole panel can slide down so that it's not hitting the bathroom vent so these were a couple things that i knew about but over the winter totally forgot about that type of interference so luckily it's uh, only about uh, four holes to drill five holes six <laughs> that uh, need to be re-drilled and move everything around so it's actually not too hard it's just a little time consuming and it's actually a nice sunny day for a change so enjoying some outdoor time been taking out the screws and ran across a couple things that bothered me these are screws that uh, LTV put into the a roof uh, to hold parts and pieces down in this case the uh, solar wires but I noticed this was the first hole I noticed is that when I pulled it out this was the screw all rusted and you can see that rust around the hole after I use a putty knife to get the decor away so an indication that I've had some water in leakage in these two spots and same with these two screws which were going into these um, assemblies that uh, coming in. this is the main solar wire coming that LTV puts in and then they use a bunch of splitters and these two right here were uh, it, it, like I say with the rust there it looks like it's got some moisture got into that area uh, around the decor now this is an area that I've never pulled these things out before to check uh, during my spring uh, checks of everything so this is a good I found it and just a, a word of warning to others who may have this set, similar setup is that apparently well, it didn't necessarily you know it could be the leakage went underneath and didn't have enough decor underneath because on top there's plenty but underneath there wasn't so anyway next I'm gonna go finish uh, using the putty knife to clean this up and then get some simple green clean the roof as best I can uh, and then I'll be putting more lap sealant into all those holes and to prevent future water incursion uh, all the other connectors I'll be using are going to be surface mount uh, you can see one of them right here these are uses a 3m double-sided tape that's uh, very uh, good sticking on there it's uh, and you use uh, zip ties uh, four-way direction on this thing so you can use zip ties to hold the wires down and that's the direction I'll be going instead of having the screw in uh, option that uh, LTV used a waterproof box with uh, input here from the uh, inside the RV for the control and then these Wago uh, connectors really nice connectors very easy just a little lever and they snap in and they're nice and tight so and as you can see this is the small box but lots of space in here i'm going to go ahead and close this up uh, the oh the other nice thing is that this thing came with a variety of these yellow inserts right here for different wire sizes 
I'm using the smallest one which fastens down around the wires pretty good so uh, this is a watertight box so this should do well after a couple hours three hours of scrubbing uh, the much cleaner still have some spots to pick up but uh, putty knife was required to get a lot of the uh, turnabon tape and you can still see the locations that it's at let's try out the retraction here are all the motors running and they are going in See the motors moving. This side's going in also. The side motors are running. Everything seems to be going well. I think I have got this taken care of. Wiring is complete for the extend and retract linear actuators. We've got a fuse in here, ready to test. We're going to start with the right hand side and we're going to tell it to extend. And if we come out here, I hear the motors going and there they are. They are extending. It's going to take about a minute for them to extend. Let's do the same for the other side. Let's hit extend. I hear motors running. Ran into a bit of a problem with the slide mechanism. As you can see right here in between, this slide actually popped out. Just tells me that there was just too much. There was uh, an interference issue with these screws, uh, the bolt. And so I used a hacksaw to cut off the excess uh, bolt that was on. You can see there's one I haven't uh, cut yet. But anyway, it put enough pressure that it popped it out of the drawer mechanism, the slide mechanism. So what I've got to do is, what's telling me is this angle right here is putting, it's too much. It's got to come back in about a half an inch. So I need to take these brackets off on the, both sides and basically flatten those angles out a little bit so that uh, it's even with this instead of uh, being out that far. The brackets have been readjusted so that they hit the right spots and the ends of the bolt are cut off so hopefully no interference now to test it. Panels are fully extended on the right hand side. Now to check to make sure that they go in okay. Looking good on this side. Extending the right side now. 